When we lift weights to build muscle, one of the most important considerations is how much training we do in the first place. Up to a certain point, with the more sets you train a muscle, the more that muscle will grow. Doing three sets of bicep curls will challenge your biceps more than just doing one set of bicep curls. But there is a point of diminishing returns, in which you do too much training and this then lowers the overall quality of your workouts. In this video, I will go into detail on the topic of how many sets you should be using on each muscle group, so that you have a better idea of how you can tackle your training programming and can start maximizing your muscle growth results. How many sets you use in your training is also often referred to as training volume. The volume you have in your training refers to how much total work you impose on a muscle. And based on a 2017 review paper, a practical way we can define volume is as the number of challenging sets per muscle group in a week. As long as you train in a reasonable rep range of say 5 to 15 repetitions per set and train close to failure, every set you do in your training will have a similar muscle building effect. So the number of challenging sets per muscle group you perform in your training is a practical and viable way to define training volume. As mentioned earlier, volume has a linear relationship with muscle growth. We can see this in a 2017 study. Linear increases in muscle growth were found as training volume increased. But we cannot increase your training volume linearly forever and expect continuously greater muscle growth results because as your volume increases, so do your fatigue levels. As fatigue accumulates to excessive levels, your training performance starts to suffer and every set you do will be of lower quality. This is also known as having so to speak junk volume in your training in which you do many sets per muscle group, but because you have such a high quantity of sets you tire yourself out and the quality of each set is low. We need to find a middle ground in which you perform a challenging number of sets per muscle group each week, but not having so many sets in your training that you run into recovery issues. This can be a tough balance to attain, but fortunately the scientific literature lends us some useful insights. Based on another 2017 review paper, it seems that for most people aiming between 10 to 20 sets per muscle group in a week is a good volume range. Now, having 10 to 20 sets per muscle group in a week is of course a very broad range, but we can be logical with this. If someone is more of a beginner trainee, then that person is better off staying closer to 10 sets per muscle group in a week, whereas an advanced trainee can stay closer to the 20 sets per muscle in a week. Next to how long you have been training, your volume tolerance also plays an important role in determining how many sets you should do. In a 2020 study, it was found that basing your training volume on previous training experience allows for better muscle growth to occur. When the participants performed 20% more sets than what they usually perform, muscle growth improved more effectively than when the researchers assigned them a random 22 sets of training volume per week. Basically, if you're looking into how many sets you should be using per muscle group in a week, first look into how many sets you are currently doing in your training. Are you training each muscle with 16 sets per week? Well then maybe try going to 18 sets in your next training program to challenge yourself more. But only make this volume increase if you're feeling well recovered from your training sessions. If your current training program makes you feel extremely tired, it might even be worth a try to reduce training volume in some instances. As a general guide for when I program workouts for my clients, I use the following model to determine training volume. I have shared this model before in one of my previous videos, but in case you missed it, let's look into it again. Because there is overlap between muscle groups, you will notice that certain muscles have higher volume goals than others. For instance, if you train your back muscles with a row, not just your back muscles are trained, but also your biceps and rear deltoids. You can decide in which category you fall based on your previous experiences with training volume. Now, if we talk about training volume, it is also important to make a quick note on training frequency. Because let's say someone has 18 sets of chest training in a week. Doing all of these 18 sets in one chest workout will typically be less effective than if you divide your volume over two to three training sessions. Just think about it, if you do a dumbbell bench press, incline press, close grip bench press, chest flies and dips all in one training day, you won't be able to maximize your performance on each lift. After the dumbbell bench, incline press and close grip bench, your chest will already be quite fatigued. If you then do more chest exercises after that, you will notice a big drop in performance. So instead, it makes more sense to organize your training volume in a way that you can train every muscle group two to three times per week. With something like an upper, lower or full body split, you will be able to divide your training volume in a way that allows you to put up a better training performance and make better gains. There is one last point I would like to discuss about training volume and that is about how much volume you should use on an underdeveloped muscle group that you want to bring up. There is some research showing that trained individuals can get away with pretty high volume ranges and still gain muscle well. In a 2019 study, researchers found that increasing volume up to 30 sets for a muscle group in a week can enhance muscle growth in trained individuals. 
Even though this volume range is unlikely to be sustainable in the long run, it does show promise for high volume training in specific cases. One way to potentially apply this piece of information is by making use of specialization phases. We know that doing too much volume can be harmful because it impairs your recovery from training. But if you decide to increase volume on only one to two muscle groups, like say your biceps and triceps, the additional fatigue is minimal. That's essentially what you're doing in a specialization phase. When you specialize in your training, you essentially train a certain muscle group with more volume than other body parts. As an example, say you want to focus more on growing your arms. In an arm specialization phase, you train your biceps and triceps with about 20 to 30% more volume than other muscle groups. The additional fatigue the arm training produces is minimal if you keep your nutrition and recovery in place. This can be done with any muscle group that you would like to bring up, so if you want to experiment with higher volume workouts, then doing specialization phases is a great place to start. But if you consider yourself a novice trainee, it's a good idea to start with the general volume recommendations on all muscle groups and focus on building your foundation. So to sum up today's video about how much volume you should be doing in your training. Up to a certain point, the number of sets you use in your training has a linear relationship with muscle growth. But too many sets too soon can harm muscle growth by making you too fatigued. The optimal volume varies per individual, but for most people, 10 to 20 sets per week is a good starting point for muscle growth. Your volume needs change over time. As you get more advanced in training, you need to gradually build up the number of sets you use in your workouts. If you want to experiment with high volume training, consider using specialization phases to bring up underdeveloped muscle groups. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding of training volume and how many sets you can use in your training per muscle group. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then definitely leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in that next video.